Okay, so we have the axle base and inventor. The first thing that I'm going to do in that step one in every one of your exercises is set the active project. I have several projects here, and you are a Monday, Wednesday class, so I double click on that. You can see that I have the tool slide in here. When I went to the Tuesday, Thursday class, it didn't show the tool slide, but when I said file open, it was there. So remember that your pinned objects sometimes have to be reopened to see them. If I go to Tuesday, Thursday now, I have uh, all three all three parts here. So these this is where we're going to end up right here. We should have all three parts and be in alignment with the other class. So starting with the axle base, I have my project set. I'm going to do a single click on part. I always mess up and double click and it opens two. So it has a part here and it doesn't matter what part one, two or three it has open. And it said master down there. Did you see that? That is a master representation. And I've never really talked about this. But there's a, a model state here that's master, and there's a view representation that's a master view. And we can make a view with the section view active um, and save it like that so that we could use these in our drawing. Representation means I may have a model with representation of surfaces that should be free of paint um, just by making them a different color or something or doing some making some weird little uh, note on it so that I could bring that up and show that in, in a drawing uh, without just having to depict it that way. So first thing I notice is Kim's background color is different. I had some good feedback from my uh, machine class saying that the videos were hard to see the lines in the sketches. So I'm going to leave it this lighter color, and I think I just used light. So if you wanted to change that, go to Tools and Application Options and Colors, and I used a light scheme. So let's see if that's better on the sketches, because that's really important. With this part, I'm going to set my little highlighter here. I'm going to start with this as my zero, zero. And I'm going to sketch this with lines. And I'm going to sketch all these lines that I can, and we're going to see how we're going to have to manipulate that. But the first thing that I want to do, and you guys will remember this to the day, maybe that you die, that Ken says, what is the first thing we do in the first thing in the sketch? On the first sketch, we have to project geometry because we don't have any face of the model to be projected onto our screen automatically. So I'm going to hit project geometry, expand the origin, and I like to go just to the first two planes. You can project the edges of the planes. That's what I'm projecting. Um, aligning your dimension ticks. Um, you can change some colors. There are some application options changes that you can make. And you're going to have to research that a little bit. I kind of use it just like this. But let's see if this works. I could make my background white if I wanted to, okay? And maybe you can see that too. That's called presentation because we don't want to do a screenshot and have a big black or a blue background. So I'm going to start with line, and so I'm going to get out of the project geometry. So when I do that, I'm always projecting the top two because I'm sketching on the third, and I don't need the edges of that projected. So the top two planes are always, I don't want to go down here and have to figure out which one of these axes to project. It's just easier for me to remember. So I'm going to hit escape on that. And when I click L for line, that's your alias. I'm going to start at this point right here. And I'm going to start with a line here. Now, anytime I draw a line, I don't know how long that line is. So we're going to look at why, but I'm just going to draw it so far out and click. Notice that it does not stay in the line command. Again, it makes me start from another point. And the reason that it does that is it is in alignment with projected geometry, and it will always do that. And it's kind of a pet peeve, but it's okay. Now, I want to talk about why we don't know this length of this line. We know the length of this and the length of this. We have a reference dimension for the overall. And the reason is 
we're assuming that the center of this radius is right on this edge. So this is one unit wide and then 4.125 uh, and then the radius of 0.375 would be a diameter of 0.75. And so that gives us our overall length. That's why six is reference. So we don't have to put reference dimensions. In fact, the ASME standard says use sparingly. But if I knew the length of this and I started up here and came around here, then I come back 1.625, 1.5, whatever's left over from the addition of the top would be whatever that line length is. So I'm just going to draw another line from here down 0.625. And then over, you can see that that's really short. You see that horizontal showing up there? That's showing me that that line will be horizontal whenever I get finished with it. It's, gonna, it's going to assume that. So that's 1.5 in the X. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to go up here. And I see that vertical. One in the Y. And now I'm going to go over 1.625. I'm holding down my middle mouse button to pan. It stays in the same thing. So right here, we're dimensioning to this 1.375 goes to the center of the full round. And if the full round is a radius of 0.375, that is from the center of that hole and that full round up to the top. So I'm going to draw the full column. When you put in a full round, it does not detract from the overall size and I'm going to just have to click because when I go from window to window, it loses its heads up display. Sorry, line. So I could have hit enter to repeat the last command. Remember that. I'm going to go up and I'm going to put in the formula because I could add it up in my mind and put it in there, but I want people to know how I got to it. So that's going to be 1.375. This is a methodology thing plus. 0.375 radius and it puts it in there as 1.75 but we know that if we click on that it's going to go right back to that and if the overall if the radius is 0.375 that's from the center out I want the overall that be 0.375 times 2 uh oh times and that's a star 2 and now I don't know how far this is. So I'm just going to draw this down here so far and leave it. Now I'm going to start just like the rhinoceros in 1405. i got to start back at the other side. Now if you look at this, the 3.5 over here, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to mess this up again, but the 3.5 over here on the left is for the overall height. Now I could do my math here or I could just draw this, and I know it's going to be taller than that last column that I drew. And I'm going to draw this, and it's going to stop because it's on that projected geometry, and I'll start again. Still in the line command. One unit for that radius. Come down 1.625. Enter. And then I'm going to go over to the right. And I don't have to draw it. I don't have to drag my leader out there. I just type it in. 4.25. We know that this is going to be way off. Okay. So it doesn't know where this line is. It's purple. It doesn't know where this line is because it doesn't know how far it is from our origin. It, it doesn't know how tall this is. So let me put in this dimension for the height. And that's 3.5. And we don't have to put in trailing zeros or absolute. That means... All dimensions are absolute zeros after the last number that we put in. Now, right here, I don't have to know how tall this needs to be. I can actually make this point right here at the end of this line coincident with this point. And if this line is horizontal, let's turn on our, object, our constraints. That's F8. 
You see, this is horizontal, this is vertical, this is horizontal. And this one is coincident with this vertical projected geometry. Then if I make these two points coincident, whichever one is fixed, which is this point, this is going to move to it. And this is all going to drag over here. Then this line will become the correct length. So let's make that coincident. It's in the upper left corner of your constraints. And I select on the endpoint and this endpoint, and I'm done. You see everything turned black, and it says fully constrained. And with the different background colors, you're going to get different colors for constrained or not constrained. So what I'm going to do real quick, though, is you see this 1.625? If I drug this down, I would not have a gap because it's coming from up here if I showed my dimensions in a drawing. So I'm going to delete this one because it goes all the way out to that point. And I'm going to dimension everything like I want it in the drawing. And you're going to see, it took me a while to understand this, that the dimensions come out exactly like you put them in the sketch. So you see if I clicked on that, it shows my formula. I can drag this one out. I can drag this one up. But that's going to be from that bottom point. So I'm going to delete this one. And I'm going to put the dimension in like I want it on the drawing. So we see the isometric views on the input sheet. They have dimensions all over them. They're not sometimes dimensioned fully. Um, we have to make assumptions. And I just want to make it as clear and concise as possible in my sketch. Off the body of the part. Cannot have that. So if I drag these out already, then I don't have any problem when I go into my drawing. Okay, and I want to. I may want to drag this out here to align it, so then I would delete that and make it from that endpoint to that endpoint, and I'm just going to be consistent here and do that. And I'm doing this when we might not need it right now, because we are going to need it later. Is there anything wrong with these two lines crossing? No, because they're extension lines. They extend the dimension away from the part. The dimension line surrounds the dimension. We can never cross that one. Okay, I'm ready to extrude. And what I'm going to do here, and you're going to see this, I'm going to do this a lot, is I'm going to highlight all the dimensions that I've used so far. so that I know that once everything is highlighted, I've got my dimensions in my model. So if you go into your drawing and you retrieve your dimensions and you're missing dimensions, you didn't put them in the sketch. So this is kind of a good way to do it. I'm going to say E for extrude. And I didn't have to get out of that dimension tool to do it. If, if I have projected geometry, it's going to separate this into two lines. But if I hover over the line that I drew, it will grab the entire boundary. At this point right here, I have to think, is there any reason? So I'm sketching on the XY plane, right? That's what we told Inventor to do. And that's right where my extrusion starts. However, if I made it symmetric, that would make my plane right in the middle so that I can mirror things. So I want to look and see, is there anything I want to mirror? Not in this model. We'll be looking at that later. I like to push my geometry away from my sketch. So my sketch would be in the front side of the part and easy to see. And I'm going to go three inches. That's just my own preference. Once I have that first extrusion, I'm going to save this in all caps. Caps lock on. And this is axle base. Why do we do this? And we can we don't have to have underscores. We can have dashes. Um, this allows spaces in the naming convention. Some do not. But I do this in all caps because if I put it in an assembly and I show the parts list, it's going to be in upper and lower case or all lower case or whatever you name it. So axle base one, axle base two, you don't want that. You want it to just have the axle base name. So if you need to redo something, um, go back and delete that file that you created before and name it just the name of the part. Because it will show up in the parts list just the way you type it in here. 
Now it shows axle base at the top. It shows it right up here. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is talk about the order of operation.